All right, let's get started on Stephen Crowder. Let's jump into this first story. We have yeah. this uh, stopbigcon.com. Yeah. Louder with Crowder, stop big con, stay in mug club, or join a new, enter your email below. So let's let's get started and talk about uh, from the beginning. Mm -hmm. You, uh, uh, most people are familiar with the story. Yeah. I want to make sure as we get this started, I'll, I'll make this, I want to make sure there's important uh, contextual understanding. People have asked why it's so important that, uh, and why, why, is so, why, why is everybody interested in the story? Why have we talked about it so much? First, I will say, well, I'm biased. I worked for big corporations. I've run my own company. I have uh, this, this passion for how the media companies operate, how I operate my media company, my vision for the future. And I know so much about this. It's something I care about. When I hear about it, I'm just driven to want to understand more, talk about it, share these ideas. But it's more than just that. I just want to make sure that my bias is clear. It's that I, for one, have taken issue with the establishment media, the establishment, media, the, the traditional media systems, how they operate with contracts. And so trying to build something different, I see what uh, what Crowder an announced and what he's talking about. And yeah. I, I ideologically agree. So this could this this conversation could change the shape of how media moves forward as the corporate media system is dying, firing people, laying people off and an independent ecosystem is emerging with these these networks. Which which form is it going to take? It could, it could it could go completely corporate, it could go completely independent, it could be a mix of both. But this is a conversation that is extremely important moving forward. So we're hanging yeah. out with Stephen Crowder and uh, Gerald, of course, to, Gerald to talk about all this. the business side more. I don't really uh, I don't really take care of the finances as much. Uh, but What's yeah. the story here? What's the so, story? Well, first off, let me let me set something up off the bat. I want to make sure that everyone here knows. Like, I know that you guys uh, have made very clear that you're monetized on YouTube because you believe that you can fight against big tech by sort of operating to some degree within the rules, but you've been very transparent about it. And so I don't want you to think that that is at all the same as what I have a problem with. And uh, I mean, we can go back to a few things. Look, it really comes down to what's right. It really comes down to what the truth is. And this is something that's been a long time coming. Gerald actually yeah. came on as CEO because we we're being batted around so long. This is, this is years and years in the making. I get the, the, the point with corporate media. Why can't you just be honest, bro? Like, just why? Why can't you just be like, yeah, I want to I wanna fucking build a media list, you know? Everything has to be, everything has to be about like fighting the big guy. Bitch, we know. We know the big guy's on your back. All these dudes in the same room saying the same bullshit. Like, oh, man, we're fighting against all these enemies, these shadowy enemies. It's like, bro, what do you mean? Like, people who control society give you money all the fucking time, okay? And they give you money because they like what you're saying. They like that you are saying things, okay? They like that you are saying things that they agree with. It's the racism shit, but not because they're personally racist. I don't think a lot of these billionaires are personally, individually like, oh man, I love, I love how fucking anti-black these guys are. It's because that kind of racism reinforced in society is a great distraction, is a great divider, okay, of the working class, and it's a great distraction. That's it. For people who say like, oh man, like, you know, the fucking, all these like billionaire CEOs, they're like individually so incredibly raised. Like, not all of them are. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to matter. It's a very liberal, like, main villain type attitude. It's like a very spiritual analysis to try to comprehend like the internal racist machinations of a fucking billionaire. When the main purpose of that racial agitative propaganda is basically to reinforce the fundamental white supremacist values that society was built on with the express purpose of dividing the working class. Okay? That's it. It doesn't matter if they're individually racist or not. You, there's no reason to moralize it. Okay? There's no reason to look at that and moralize it and try to fucking figure out Who's like personally actually raised it? Who's not? Like it, none of it matters. When we're talking about systemic, when we're talking about systemic issues, when we're talking about like what role extremely wealthy people play and and why they fund conservative propaganda, what you need to understand is that it doesn't matter what their fucking personal opinions are. Okay. What matters is that this is a very valuable tool to keep the working poor divided. Um, the issue that I have with 
many in the conservative side of this sphere is uh, is the fundamental uh, misleading and dishonesty. That's what I have a problem with. And you see that here as a story took place. Um, kind of it started right where we released this video. Uh, we didn't, and it was just by design, didn't name names because there could be a litany of contracts that are similar to this. A lot of them are often verbal offers. We, we mentioned it could have been Fox News for all anyone who knew, it, it, and, and they're the corporate monolith. There's about yeah. you know four or five, uh, I would say we have five, four or five offers, mm -hmm. and then there are other investors who come into the space who just want to dump in a whole bunch of money. Um, you know, Daily Wire here out of themselves, um, and uh, I understand that people are saying, well, people knew who it was. Well, that's because some of the people who were under those contracts said, yeah, I recognize those contracts. And Candace said on this show, I recognize the terms from my contract. Here's the thing. I said, this is wrong. Penalizing conservatives, and I believe this to my absolute core, penalizing conservatives on behalf of big tech while taking money from people who are paying you, investing in you to fight big tech. That is what they're investing in. That is what Mug Club is investing in. That's what subscribers are investing in. <laughs> it's awesome. He's just like, dude, I, you come to me because I tell you all the fucking dumb shit. I'm a dumb guy, and I'm telling you the most racist bullshit that you can fucking hear, okay? And you want to hear more of that. And Big Tech is so against it, dude. They're so against it. So, hey, you just got to, hey, sometimes I'm going to get banned, so you got to go to my mug club to get all the, the only clans uh, content, you know? Just, I paywalled it. Just got to do it. While simultaneously penalizing conservatives is fundamentally wrong. I had that conversation and said, look, just please give me your word. You're not going to be doing this with other people who, as you well know, when you start in this industry, don't know better. Immediately after that, right, the conversation was, Crowder is making a big deal as a dick about money, right, basketball money. $50 million a year was the implication, which you know is not true. Uh, people aren't saying that now. That's not what people have a problem with. What people yeah, because people are stupid. Like, the entire audience is like, conditioned to the dumbest person in the room the entire audience is geared toward like the the <laughs> the conservative movement is geared towards the dumbest guy you know okay so of course when you're saying dumb shit like when you're dumbing down your fucking racist agitprop to a degree where like it gets so out of hand that you get banned for it right and you can't do the dog whistles like Jordan Peterson or Ben Shapiro or even Tim Pool or Tucker Carlson, who was the dog whistle master, right? You will get benefits from it. You get a lot of benefits from it. Like Steven Crowder has an audience despite being a hack, right? Because a lot of people are fucking stupid. But now that you've cultivated that audience, specifically of conservatives who are oftentimes very dumb, dumber than the average person, okay? You are, uh, you know, the, the, the other people that are usually using dog whistles are going to come across like they're disingenuous, okay? The other guys that only do dog whistles, well, they're disingenuous guys. They're not, they're not serious about the racism. They don't want to fucking put their money where their mouth is. Look at me. I'm the real guy. I'm the real dumb guy. I'm like you. I say the things you want to hear, and then I pay while the other juicy tidbits. Those guys, though, they're not real with it. People have a problem with, I understand, is, you know, the idea of a phone call. And now the narrative has, has shifted to betrayal of a friend. Um, that's what people want to say. I say last straw. I say this is something that I've watched, experienced for years tried to give every possible out to do the right thing and have tried to do the right thing in the way that we run our own business. Um, saw the gaslighting, the bully tactics that take place behind the scenes of other creators and knew it wouldn't be myself. So now the narrative shifts to how, how, how could you record a phone call, betray a friend? Well, hold on a second. That was fucked up. Like, that was fucked up. It was just about money. It was just, this is just business. And now it's, hey, we're really good friends. Well, which is it? 
I mean, you have to, you kind of have to pick a lane, right? Are we good friends? Or are you sending out a boilerplate contract that you demand of everybody, according to what they say, that have 110% penalties on behalf of big tech? And the issue with that is that it's dishonest. It's a tactic of the left. It's a tactic, the same kind of tactic that you see from the left, the gaslighting, where if you, let me ask you this. If well, someone real came quick, out, real, real quick. Yeah. I just want to clarify. You said 110% penalty? Yeah, you can see the contract right there. If you add them all up. So you, well, because you there's, owe, a, there's you boycott owe them penalty. Money or there's, what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's a fair Seriously. point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, and this is the issue. It, you know, well, let, I made it clear let, it wasn't about me. This is, the, this is the part that I love personally about the contract because, like, he has every right to basically say, dog, you're hiring me to be racist. Why would you penalize me for being racist and then fucking getting clapped for it? It's literally a funding vehicle for the right to go overboard, get banned, and then push people to a fucking paywall where you can be just as you can be as unhinged as you want. Okay, he would never say that. Yeah, of course he's not going to say that, but I do understand why he's mad. I, I I do get why he gets upset at that clause for sure. But like this could have been discussed over the phone where in a secret conversation, not a recorded one where Jeremy Boring was probably going to tell him, hey, listen, you just got to dial it back a little bit. You're too overboard. We love your shit. We love how racist you get. It's cool. Just don't go overboard. That's it. Just, like, don't get banned. That's it. We need you as a propaganda mouthpiece, but when you get banned, we don't have that propaganda mouthpiece any longer. Like, getting banned, maybe, you know what? Fuck it. We'll, we'll make concessions, okay? We'll let you get banned, once a quarter, okay? A quarterly ban for you, which will immediately boost our, our, you know, mug club numbers. And that's fine. But just once a quarter. Keep it to a quarter, you know? Me, it's about... This is literally the professional conservative media version of, like, telling Kanye West to not, to not say, I love Hitler, please. Okay? This is the exact same conversation it's just basically telling steven crowder you can be as racist as you want just don't get fucking banned stupid you know about other people it's about this being the fundamental practice and by the way it's not just daily wire to be clear this happens in this incestuous sphere across the board what would you do this is my R question real quick let me ask just just yeah. uh my concern is if people aren't familiar with the total context you leave the blaze mm -hmm. or or in the process of yeah. you're fielding offers Mm -hmm. You receive a contract. A term. Term a sheet. Term not a contract. Yes, which uh, people are semantically a, a saying. A predecessor to a contract. but yeah. Which is basically the terms they're offering for a contract. Right. Some people have argued. But yeah, the, the point is, yeah. they basically said, you will be penalized 25% yeah. if you get a strike. No, if you're demonetized. If you're demonetized. Then another 20% if there's a strike. Then another 20%, I don't remember the numbers, for was, Facebook, for Spotify, but there's also another penalty if your sponsors get boycotted. <laughs> there's also another penalty if you don't agree to 10%, uh, if, if you deny 10% of the sponsors, yeah. which is probably like you, we probably accept one out of five sponsors. But let me just kind of so go through this timeline really quickly. For, go ahead. for people who are trying to understand what's going on, it's basically the contract you received specifically outlined term YouTube. Sheet, term, term sheet. sheet. Yeah, term sheet. The term sheet you received. I don't know if it matters. Said YouTube, you don't put something in a term sheet that you don't want in a contract. Right. Nope. It said YouTube, Apple, Spotify, and Facebook. Yeah. Specifically, if these big tech companies are upset with you, we dock your pay. Yes. That's an important well, distinction. Hold on. Consider. And not even dock his pay. I want to be very clear here. This is a production house. This is our budget that gets docked. Steven is not just taking... This is not basketball where you pay Kyrie Irving to go out and shoot hoops, right? Sure. You're paying an entire team of people well, to produce. Before we get to that, before we get to like the finances. Yeah. Let's stuff. go through the time. I wanna, yeah. yeah. Um, let me ask you this. If someone publicly was going, and by the way, I'm not going to be doing the personal stuff. I'm not going to be coming in here calling anybody a bitch, right? Sending out hatchet people. Um, I understand why Candace was mad. Honestly, I understand, I understand why she was He's like, I, we watched this part uh, last night in between Valo sessions, which you guys all missed out if you don't watch me play Valorant because I'm doing commentary in between as well. Uh, but this is, this is where he's like, I'm not going to say Candace owns a bitch, but she is a bitch. Watch. He was, I'd probably be mad too. I will imply so, um, it. I don't, I don't think it gives you an excuse to go and talk the way like every girl does who gets their husband into a fight at a bar, but I understand why she was upset. Um, 
if you had the ability of someone's going out saying, hey, you're, you're, you're a difficult person who only cares about the money and uh, that you're a bitch and, and you had the opportunity to clear it in because it was verifiably untrue, which now no one is arguing, would you do it? Would you, how else do, would people switch from it was about a $50 million salary to, oh, recording a phone call? Does James, do we allow it when James O'Keefe does it? Is it only when corruption is on the side of the left? And here's the issue is I'll tell you who this hurts, the dishonesty. I'm not just saying... Daily Wire, this is really this is about the entire movement as a whole. There are a lot of practices that go on, and it hurts the sponsors, hurts the creators, hurts the viewers, hurts the investors. And by investors with us, you know, it's entirely mug club. It's people who pay to subscribe. We don't make a dime off of YouTube. We haven't for many years. And it hurts what I if if you believe what we say we believe, the movement in the country as a whole. So that right there, right, is fundamentally dis and the gaslighting still keeps taking place. Candace Owens on this show said. Um, hey, we all follow the same guidelines, right? We all follow, the Crowder does too. That's verifiably false. And I'll say, you can publicly audit this. We've had four strikes, right, in the last, since May, I think, 2021 to October 2022. Uh, one was the Mackay Bryant. Uh, one was a sketch with Alex Jones. That one's guilty. One was, <laughs> as charged. One was him uh, quoting the CDC. And by the way, none of this bad. will get you in trouble because you can say this now. Him quoting the CDC. I did, yeah. Bringing up the CDC numbers on flu deaths for children versus COVID. And we were saying, this is interesting science, right? That COVID kills more senior citizens, but for some reason it's significantly less lethal to young people, to infants. That science is accepted now, so you won't get a strike. But It's so funny that they're mentioning it like this. As though that's the way that they described it. Okay? There's just no fucking shot. Oh, we were just mentioning the science. Motherfucker, you wouldn't know what science is if it bludgeoned you in the fucking dome. Okay? He is such a fucking worm lord, dude. They always are like, oh, dude, we're, we're just... We're just using the CDC information. Oh, <laughs> like, come on. Why? <laughs> like, oh, yeah, yeah. But that was one of the strikes. The other was when we had Carrie Lake on in a gubernatorial election. Four. How many have taken place from Daily Wire? You guys, zero. Now, here's the thing. I'm not saying it's a badge of honor. I'm not saying that it's a badge of honor to be. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, I'm not saying it's a badge of honor, but it's kind of a badge of honor. But suspended. If, if they came out and said, look, look, we demand, as uh, Jeremy said in his 55-minute video, we demand that all of our creators follow these rules that YouTube and Facebook set through punitive practices and mandating of our creators to do so. And Crowder's a little bit more of a rebel. You know what? He's been banned for four times. And that's just, that's not the same kind of, that's not a problem. The problem is saying that we all follow the same rules because here's, so that's all publicly verifiable. Now, I could tell you, I could tell you guys that behind the scenes, I've had many conversations with senior YouTube executives who say, you know, we might be able to get you re-monetized if you kind of play ball like these got Daily Wire and insert other people here. I could tell you that, but would you believe me? Or would I have to provide receipts? I could tell you that that takes place. That hurts the creators. So that's like, I believe that. It's a bizarre take, but I believe it to a certain degree. Because the entire, because I know Steven Crowder has an account manager. Okay, he has an account manager. I, I know that. Like, that's as is a part of his job is as a YouTube content creator, there is an account manager associated with his account. Big enough YouTube uh, content creator, of course. And no, not his dad. I'm saying like a person that works at YouTube manages his content. Okay. And like, I'm sure that person's like, dude, please follow the standards and practices all the fucking time. They're like, please just. Like, if you want to fucking make money on YouTube, just follow the goddamn rules. And he takes that conversation and he goes, wow, that's really fucking, you see that? It's big tech right here. Big tech right here, you know, doing their thing. And, and I'm sure the account manager, Steven Crowder, is not exactly fond of him. You know what I mean? Because, like, constantly getting clapped up constantly fucking getting uh, permanently demonetized because he's just a fucking asshole. And the account manager also has to toe this delicate line where they have to make sure that like, you think their performance is tied to him? No, they have to manage his bitch ass while simultaneously understanding that, like, if he gets pe penalized too much, 
the entire might of the conservative legal infrastructure is going to come after YouTube because they do it all the time. They are the biggest cry bullies on the fucking planet. This is like, this is the reason why every single conservative outlet, platform, anything that touches the media or anything that touches like social media in general has a fat legal team of the worst lawyers you've ever seen on retainer whose entire job is to lose lawsuits, okay? They're, that's their entire job. They go out there and they hold up people with paperwork. They, they, you know, they accrue millions of dollars of retainer fees on the other side as well. They're making, they're, they're forcing all these platforms and everyone else to basically have also lawyers that are constantly fucking working on these legal issues that they hold them up with. They get special treatment for that, uh, for that reason. And then they still fuck up. They do it. They do it all the time. Like, Rumble sues everybody, okay? They're, they're constantly suing YouTube. They're always suing people under the guise of, like, defending free speech. And they have fat money lines, so it doesn't matter. They have billionaire investors that want them to do this. This is a great conversation to, to have. Just don't focus on billionaires stealing your, uh, you know, extracting your, your additional labor value, your surplus labor value. Focus on how uh, YouTube is uh, stopping you from saying the N-word instead. That's the real conversation. That's the conversation you should be having. There's out there who they end up, you know, hitting a glass seat. Eh, to be honest, conservatives and the left are all huge crybabies. The world's a paradox. Good is bad for you and bad is good for you. Whatever, blah, blah, blah. Dude, you're brilliant. You, you type that out, dude. Type that. You type that shit out like an anime villain. You know what I mean? You fucking went... Tch. Yeah, there's crybabies everywhere, okay? Ultimately, though, there is there is such a... there. You got to look at the cause, Okay. If someone who, who is like, I don't know, supporting Palestinian lives is getting unjustifiably banned from a major platform, that's unacceptable. That's inappropriate. If someone is getting banned from a platform specifically because they're like uh, uh, advocating for police murdering more black people in the most horrifying ways possible, when there's plenty of other, uh, there's plenty of content creators who are advocating to murder black people in the hands of the police. Right? Ben Shapiro does it all the time. He just knows what not to say. Steven Crowder literally takes it to that extra step. That extra step that ends up getting him banned. But the difference is the left has no organized strategy of like constantly holding up platforms under legal scrutiny. Okay? The left doesn't have deep billionaire investor pockets. That's the difference. All that shit on the left in independent media that is truly independent is absolutely funded by grassroots. That's why it's hilarious when uh, conservatives say, George Soros, George Soros is like, bro, what the fuck are you talking about? There is no leftist billionaire that has funded individual uh, independent media operations, okay? They're, that's not a thing. They have NGOs and whatnot, but that's firmly within the liberal media infrastructure that doesn't touch independent media in the same way that, like, even Jeffrey Epstein famously funded a fucking psychotic race realist guy. Uh, I forget his name. He's, like, the French-Canadian race realist guy. Like, even he, as a tiny hyper racist far right content creator on youtube was funded by jeffrey epstein like think about that no not molnu jf yeah he got like uh he got like 65 grand or something from jeffrey epstein jf guruppy yeah this guy is a race realist he's like suppose race realism is like saying trying to find false science to prove the biological uh, factors that that uh, you know guide us. It's uh, like bioessentialism, uh, claiming that like if you're basically it's the long way to try to say uh, 
that you are, if you're black, you're just genetically inferior to white people. Like that guy got, and that's not a lie. I mean, that, that guy is a tiny ass fucking right wing YouTube con, uh, content creator. Why the fuck did that guy get 65 grand from Jeffrey Epstein? Because a lot of rich people love that shit. A lot of rich people have their own unique personal interest in that kind of stuff like Jeffrey Epstein clearly did. Okay. Or they like the, the propaganda that people like Steven Crowder put out there ceiling that has set the sandbox that has mandated their creators. The same thing happens um, with sponsors. Well, let me, let me ask you a quick, what does that mean, play ball? There's like, some, I, obviously you're paraphrasing, like, but... Yeah, paraphrasing. Um, uh, titles, subjects, not talk about this subject or not talk about it in this way. Yeah. Uh, maybe soften, don't use these words. You know, maybe change this a little bit. This happens a lot, right, behind the scenes, and that makes it impossible for independent content creators. The same thing happens, by the way, so that's, that's gaslighting that you see right there. We all follow the same rules. It was about money, then it's about a phone call with sponsors. Look... But if I, I could ask you, did YouTube reach out to you and say, hey, do you want to play ball with us? Did yeah, we happen? have conversations all the time with YouTube. Oh, got it. Matter of fact, I can tell you that you know, some, here's the thing. I'm not going to be providing receipts to people who don't want to be involved. Right? Yeah. There's a difference between single party consent state and wiretapping. You don't rope people in who are victims. But if it's, someone, if it's an entity that you believe is predatory, that's the difference. There are good people at YouTube. There are some good people there who want, but their hands are tied. And guess what? Everyone else's hands are tied. If you say, hey, we're all trying to fight this system that exists, but you're not. You're mandating that you exist within the system. Only one. Are you worried you might get copyright live again, or does that not apply to this show? That's such a weird question to ask, man. No, I don't think Tim Pool is going to copy strike me for doing commentary over his video. I, I don't know. Like, maybe I'm too hyper aware of, like, haters out here, but, like, No, that, that's an insane thing to do. Only someone like Gavin McGinnis, who just like doesn't give a fuck about being called a Nazi, would do that shit. One person is saying, hey, you know what? If you want to be monetized and you don't, that's fine. And one is saying, you have to... Why is that a weird question? Because it's like, it's an odd question because it's like a known thing that people on YouTube don't do this. Same with Steven Crowder, same, same with Tim Pool, same with Ben Shapiro... Uh, it, it just, so it feels like it's coming from a place of like someone implying that I'm about to get copy striked or something. Oftentimes people ask that question and then go to Tim pool and be like, Hey, can you, can you copy strike this guy live? This is not paywalled. This is just perfectly valid, uh, fair use to, I'm like pausing and, and criticizing every aspect of this. Fit into this box. Very important context to this is, uh, Obviously, after you put like the first threat. video, I've talked with a bunch of my friends, and they said, "Look, you know, Daily Wire is trying to run a business. If he gets if he gets banned off YouTube, how are they going to sell ads? How right. are they going to do the sponsorships? Where his views are gone? Yeah. And I've seen people tweet, all of Crowder's views come from YouTube anyway, so he'd basically be unmonetizable if he was banned. And then I point out, first of all, that's that's just categorically false. Yes, yeah, not true. Because Rumble exists, and Ben if, streamed there for the first time today. And this is an important context. The contract you were offered says Facebook, Apple. Uh, I said YouTube, Apple, Facebook, Spotify, mm -hmm. but it didn't mention any of your views from any other any other platforms. And there, there's Google Podcasts; mm -hmm. they get they get views. I know the numbers. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's not the same as say, right. Apple, but it's interesting to me that for a lot of people, like Dan Bongino, for instance, had more subscribers on Rumble than YouTube. Yeah, it's interesting then that their attitude is: if you're banned from YouTube, it's a twenty percent fee reduction, which you mentioned includes your 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 staff 25. salary. Twenty five, and then no, sorry, 25 twenty five for and then another twenty. It's forty five. In other words, for us, right off the bat. And this is the thing. I said, like, what, is this is this an accident? Like, you know, in other words, okay, we're good, but let, good let me friends. Just, but hold on a second. Does anyone here, does anyone here have a problem? Do you do you not believe me when I say we haven't been monetized on YouTube for three years? You all know oh, that, right? Oh, right, of course. Literally. And we're not that close. Zero days, or did you have So pockets? what happened is we were demonetized, how many years ago? Then they someone accidentally demonetized the... us for like four months. And then demonetized. <laughs> we were like, <laughs> yeah, the and then demonetized again. We were like, what happened? And they were like, yeah, actually, no, sorry, you're demonetized again. I was like, well, skunked again. So what did we so do the, to this, get monetized, is, basically? But, but, yeah. Yeah. So if you get demonetized on YouTube so much and it makes no money for you, why don't you just like pick up, why don't you just like take all of your content to Rumble? What could be the reason why you still want to stay on YouTube when you very clearly have this alternative bastion of conservative ideas, you know, this free speech only space, as a matter of fact. So what's up with that? 
Why is it these guys are always on big tech when they have created alternatives to big tech? Is it perhaps because little tech, if you want to call it that, is, is not real? There's no real reach there? Because it's so odd that they try to always justify, like, Rumble's fucking sweet. I mean, I got more subscribers on Rumble uh, than anything else. I mean, I'm fucking killing it on Rumble. It's like, then why aren't you just on Rumble? If there was a platform that routinely banned me, okay, and I had an alternative to that platform that was even larger, like TikTok. I get banned on TikTok regularly, right? But I also understand the awesome power that TikTok has with respect to reach. Which is part of the reason why I don't want to fucking uh, get banned on TikTok. It's major exposure. It's major reach. Okay? So I'm not going to sit here and be like, well, that's why, you know, fuck Twitter. I'm going to Mastodon. Like, no, fuck that shit. Of course I'm not going to Mastodon. Of course I'm going to stay on fucking Twitter. Do you see what I'm saying? These guys act like, you know, Rumble is the actual competitor to YouTube, and it's actually huge. Meanwhile, they also personally understand, they recognize that it's all bought at the hell. It's not real views, which is why they try to stay desperately on YouTube. I want, to, an answer, right? I, want, I want to make sure this point is made clear for everybody, because yeah. this is a very important part of the argument um, when I heard it. Mm -hmm. If the point is you can't sell ads or build an audience because YouTube banned you and that's mm -hmm. it, but you're getting 85% or more views on Rumble, the question is, why no penalty for getting banned from Rumble? Why is Rumble not a consideration in the contract? Yeah, if you're getting 85% or more views on Rumble, <laughs> that's a good question. Maybe you should double down on that question and ask yourself that question and go, what's up? Why do you want to stay on YouTube then? I wonder why no penalty on getting banned on Rumble. Well, one, because you'll never get banned on Rumble. And two, Rumble doesn't matter. It's not real. But Tim can't say that. You want to know why? Because he's on Rumble. Because every conservative has to maintain this lie that, like, Rumble is real. Rumble is a real platform. It's actually a really good YouTube competitor. Meanwhile, I'm willing to bet they spend m the majority of their fucking funds after, obviously, web, uh, you know, video hosting services. The majority of Rumble's funds probably go to legal. Specifically so that they can turn around and fucking consistently consistently fucking uh, uh, battle the free speech uh, fighters like YouTube. That's it. Like, what would they have, like, no advertisers whatsoever. All their advertisers are, like, dog shit, like, truth social advertisers, you know, selling fucking gold and shit. Uh, and, and Iraqi dinars, okay? That's the, that's the only thing you're getting. At all. Mm -hmm. And why don't they simply say comparable views instead of the platform? Right. Like, if for every million views per day you lose, we dock you I X can percent. answer you that question exactly. Because so what it's happened? It's fundamental to the oh. business model. And I was informed of that. It is fundamental. In other words, there are plenty of options out there, right? He can tell you. I get excited when I, I walk out of him and go, hey, how many people are tuning in live on YouTube? How many on Rumble? They go, oh, it's tips. There are more people on Rumble. Sure, I've been on YouTube for a long time, since 2006. But it doesn't mean that they don't change, right? And the issue is, I think it's a great thing to use these platforms. There's a huge difference, by the way, you know, between being monetized and being on the platform. Yeah. But ultimately, if we believe what we say, we have to be trying to get to the point where we know that fast forward five years, you can't speak the truth on YouTube, certainly not if you want to be monetized. But there's this jockeying for position with people who they see as competition. And the issue here that I've always made clear is the locking in of these punitive contracts that mandate and enforce big tech policies and guidelines as a matter of business. And that hurts creators. And the same thing, by the way, when we're talking about misleading practices with sponsors, there's no problem, right? And this is all publicly verifiable. I want you guys to be able to audit this so that there don't have to be as many receipts provided. You market your, 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 your channel, right? I think we probably have some ads running right now, like Spotify, like, yeah, hey, if you like course. this show, tune on Spotify. Yeah. Um, but there's a big difference. We know that there's a huge problem in our industry of pay to play. Now, you can do that. That's fine if you want to grow your numbers. But what, the, what, what is that? What is so that, pay to mean? play means that you can buy views, right? You can pay to play. You can run your video as a pre-roll ad and people see mm -hmm. that number. But really, a lot of them are 14 second views, eight second views, but it still clicks that counter. The closest apples to apples comparison that you could do right now is you could go out and take like, let's say not this controversy because there's cross pollination, but Bench is a huge show. Of course he is. But go take some videos there right now that have a million plays. 
go month after month. Take a bunch of them. Look at the likes. Look at the comments. Take videos from my channel. It's a comparable place. Take them with 800,000, 600,000 plays because we've converted them a lot to Rumble. Look at the likes. Look at the comments. It's startling because it's a lot easier to buy plays than it is to buy likes and comments. That's not a problem. Wait, are you saying that the Daily Wire is buying views for their content? I'm saying that they run the videos. This happens not just Daily Wire, to be clear. Stop Big Con is designed because of this entire industry. And what happens is, yes, these views get inflated. There's nothing wrong with running ads to increase the video count. The problem is this. When, you, when that is used to then go out and- I mean, he's not wrong. They do that. They 100% do that. A big, a big chunk of advertising revenue goes back into inflating fucking view counts on YouTube. It is hilarious to turn around and act like you can't view bot Rumble though when it's infinitely easier to just view bot a website like Rumble. It's it is funny though to think about like these these major conservative commentators like they they buy millions and millions of dollars of ads of their own content specifically to make it seem like their content is being viewed by more people. And set sponsorship rates. And then this is what happens with creators. When you sit down with sponsors and these are hard earned dollars, right? A lot of them are mid-sized companies. You run them on this show and they say, yeah, but you know what? we didn't get our money's worth and this person is the number one show because they go out and they say that they have these numbers and they set the, what happens they drop those rates across the board which hurts everybody or they pull out all together now you can publicly verify that that information yeah this practice is very commonplace and it's being it's it's done all the time in every avenue of media by the way but one of the grossest and very obvious transparent ways that they do it is the new york times bestseller list Everybody wants to be on the New York Times bestseller list. So what do conservatives do? They will literally write a book. Step one, write a book. Step two, get the uh, get conservative lobbyists to purchase like thousands and thousands and thousands of copies of said books that will never be read by a human being, okay? They're just rotting in a goddamn basement somewhere. Ultimately, there's pallets of these fucking books sitting in basements somewhere in D.C., but doesn't matter. Now it's on the New York Times bestseller list. Don Jr. did this. Every single person did this. Every single conservative that has made it to the bestseller list has always purchased uh, these, 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 done this exact same thing. I know this is off topic, so my bad if this is inappropriate, but do you plan to cover Cop City sometime or have you already? Yes, I covered it yesterday. Extensively. Now, I could tell you guys that I've had conversations with sponsors that say, we're not going to be running in the conservative space because it's just not as effective as we thought it was, or you know what we're going to be pulling out, and content creators just say, why am I getting these low advertising rates? Here's the issue. If you're some kid, and by kid, I mean, you know, you could be a 40-year-old with a smaller podcast. Let's say you get a quarter million plays. Not as big, but good numbers. Let's say you get half a million. Another way that conservative big con makes money is speaking engagements, which is why they always like go after Hillary Clinton and shit, which is understandable. Hillary Clinton does that shit too. Um, speaking engagements is another way to like funnel funds, additional funds into uh, funnel funds into like conservative speakers. Every college campus, uh, some of them will literally double you. Like alumni will. Alumnus will double the the speaking engagement uh, uh, money that like a a particular group is able to pay for a Ben Shapiro. He's getting fucking paid like seventy five grand, and then also getting another seventy five on top of that from the alumnus, uh, the right wing conservative alumni of that uh, of that institution. They do it all the time. That's also another way that they are constantly uh, churning out more money. Always. And they don't even, why would alumni do that? What do you mean? They're conservative and they like Ben Shapiro and they think perhaps foolishly or perhaps they don't even give a fuck that like, uh, uh, that uh, Ben Shapiro coming to campus will actually change young minds and shape them and turn them conservative.
You know this. Like, Charlie Kirk specifically was outed as someone who kept getting money from old conservatives like Foster Freeze uh, and, and then dumping all of those funds back into ads on Facebook. And the ads were being seen by like 75 plus. His target demographic on Facebook of Turning Point USA, an institution that is supposed to be there specifically for the younger generation of conservatives, to create the younger generation of conservatives. Their ads were targeting 75-year-olds on Facebook. Why? Why were they targeting 65 to 75-year-olds on Facebook if their goal is to change the minds uh, of, of the youth? That's how they do it. It's just like, it's a grift. Prager U has inflated views. Daily Wire has inflated views because they have a shitload of funds that they claim is for marketing. And what are they marketing? Just their own videos. That's why every single one of my fucking videos on my YouTube is accompanied by like a Matt Walsh ad, okay? Meanwhile, on Twitch, there's a top of the hour ad break that comes and that's three minutes long and that's usually like the Marine Corps or some shit. But fear not, you can avoid those ads as long as you subscribe for $5 or for free. That's right, Twitch Prime is free. Hassan's pit crew chief. Thank you for the five, get the subs. Awkward7, thank you for the five, get the subs, allowing 10 people to no longer see the ads. Thank you, MP Sharky, for the five, get the subs, allowing five people to no longer see the ads. Here's the three-minute ad break now. You can avoid the ads as well uh, that way. You can avoid them by... Getting gifted a sub. The Raging Hoppa. Thank you for the tank of the subs. Hassan, view bots. No one here even likes gaming. Brother, if you think I view bot it, why wouldn't I view bot while I'm gaming? I would literally just consistently keep a 30K audience. If I knew how to do a view bot, I would just view bot while I'm gaming and no one would know any, no one be, none, ever, no one would be wise to that. They would think, oh, wow. Like, I mean, he has 40K normally. He has 40K normally, so he just has 30K when he's gaming. That would be normal. Can't do that because nobody would believe that people won't leave when you start playing Valor. I just don't like that you guys make a mockery of this, okay? You just... Uh, another reminder that you don't give a shit about me or the content that I'm trying to make and just, like, you're just here for the news, you know? Fake, fake fans, dude. Main place, right? Good numbers, but they're real. And you are a conservative. It is what it is, and I you're guess. trying to grow this. And then all of a sudden, your content, YouTube is saying, can't say that, can't do that because of the box that's being created by all of these companies in big conservatism. And then you're trying to make it, right? You're trying to make it something that is financially solvent. And you can't because sponsors no longer have faith in this side of the industry. That is something that hurts those creators. And this is something that, so the creators are hurt, the sponsors are hurt, the viewers are hurt because viewers, I just want to finish this one. And then any questions you have, the viewers are hurt because <sighs> they feel isolated. They feel like their views are not represented, right? They go, hold on a second, I'm conservative. Why are none of the top people saying whatever it is? X, Y, Z. And the investors are hurt. And I don't mean billionaires. In our case, it's people who invest. When they sign up for Mug Club, they are paying us because they say, we know that you're demonetized. We know that you don't run nearly as many sponsors. You're very selective. And we think we are giving you our dollar in faith because we think that you are fighting for us. Imagine. Yeah, 35K viewers, 70K faces. You're right. That's not true. There's a, the, the, the Valo Lovers Coalition is growing in this community, which I don't even know if, uh, I, don't, I don't even know if that's a good thing or not, to be honest, but. It has grown a lot. No, it's not. Yes, it has. Well, how would you know, you fucking idiot? You're not even, if you're saying this, that means you're not even in here while it's happening. So why, how would you even know? 
motherfuckers would be like, nah, no, it's not growing because I leave every time. I'm like, okay, but like, but so then you have no idea. <laughs> you don't even, you don't even pretend to wash, dude. I want to give you one final parallel world there. Um, imagine if we left the blade. Anyway, we're okay? done with the valid discourse. And this, stupid. again, the issue is that everyone is demanded to sign these exact same contracts. That's what they said. They've been very, very clear about that. It's just business. Imagine if Mug Club leaves the blaze. And let's say we come back two, three months. Okay? And we come back, and all of a sudden, I don't talk about vaccines in the way that I used to. All of a sudden, I don't talk about election integrity like I used to. All of a sudden, I don't host Carrie Lake in the same way that I used to or host her at all. And all of a sudden, all the parodies, the sketches, you know, the sweeping epic, like a parody of Saving Private Ryan or There Will Be Blood or Schindler's List, whatever it is, you don't see any, change my mind, you don't see any of those anymore, but you see four or five live reads. I'd be yeah. the definition of a sellout. <laughs> and I would be selling out the people who paid for something different. Only one group of people here is saying, you have to fit into this box. I'm saying, you got to let some people let the freak flag fly. I don't care if you want to be monetized or not. Don't lock people and punish them on behalf of big tech when you claim that you are fighting them. And it is everywhere. And it's disheartening. Like, as stupid as this conversation is, as silly, like, there's numerous different things that uh, I, I want to say about this. One, I don't think that Steven Crowder has a genuine interest here, okay? I think he has a, a, a secondary interest, or rather, a real interest here. And that interest is he wants to build an email list for himself. He saw how much money Alex Jones is making. He saw how much money everyone else is making when, when they're independent. He knows that like, if he has an email list for himself, that's the way. That's the way to go. Okay? He just wants to he just wanna wants to run up the numbers and he wanted to be controversial and he wanted to eat away at some people's audiences. The other the other stupid part of this conversation, though, is not that he's also disingenuous, but he's also fucking simultaneously complaining about like being I don't know. He just why are email lists so powerful? Um, you can sell it to to political operatives. And also, an email list is powerful because it's it's membership. He wants he basically wants to create his own membership because Mug Club was under the Blaze, so the Blaze was getting all the fucking revenue. He was getting a kickback probably. So he wants to make his own. He wants to get his own. What the fuck? Why is Ludwig calling me? I'm streaming, bro. What the fuck? Wait, what? I, I'm I'm live. Oh, you're streaming. Fuck yeah. yeah. That makes sense. I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you after, or maybe I'm, later if you want to play Valorant. I'm flying to my mother's house because she's turning sixty. Well, God bless her heart. But maybe another day. Yeah, I already, I already wished her a happy birthday. You're such a piece of shit. You're a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, please. she appreciated it. All right. Yeah, I, bet, I bet. I bet. All right. All right. Have a good one. <laughs> I mean, that's a classic. I had to do it. That's a classic. It was really funny when he said 0 and 3, and then he was bottom fragging. <laughs> he was underneath me after shitting on me like that. Anyway, I love Ludwig. He was calling to ask about Japan, which I will be going, but uh, most likely not with him. Have you been approached by Democrats? Don't think you have an email list. Just asking. <laughs> no, dude. Why the fuck would the Democrats approach me? The Democrats are like, we really want, we really want, want a, pe a list of people who like absolutely fucking despise the Democratic Party. I don't even have an email list. But <laughs> I genuinely fucking, first of all, the Democrats, as a party, are absolutely aware of my existence, are aware of this community. That would be weird if they weren't. Even they are not that oblivious. There are plenty of young staffers who are in here, I know for a fact. There are plenty of people who work within the Democratic Party's infrastructure that are in here regularly. I know that for a fact. 
We even have like famous ex community members like H Bizzle 13, uh, who uh, I think is just the RP head now, so he doesn't really show up that much. Um, but I know that Democrats are aware and are are not interested in having a conversation with me in any capacity. I mean, I've helped them out before, like the Raphael Warnock team. I've helped them out in the past, but. I know that they are aware, but they don't want to have a public relationship or even like uh, want anything to do with me because when Joe Brandon became president and uh, and they were trying to do outreach for the vaccine for the youth, uh, they told Twitch that they did not want to uh, they did not want Anthony Fauci to come on my stream. Like specifically, they were like, no. You've worked with the DSA, right? Yes, of course, all the time. I'll tell you a story. I think the people who uh, have watched my content consistently know about this. The it was it was called uh, some some refer to it as ad rights sales, ad rights buying. Back in the early 2010s, these up and coming digital media outlets would sell the uh, rights. What, what, what they would do is they would, I'm sorry, they would buy the rights to views. Mm -hmm. So let's say you're a company called like um, uh, uh, badbehavior.com, you know, some word that represents people. Why'd you who, pick one that is clearly I going know. to direct people to hardcore pornography? <laughs> <laughs> Go there. Yeah. All right, let's just say. Large, good um, behavior. Yeah. <laughs> Skittles and Rainbows website, okay? <laughs> And uh, same uh, big. OK, okay. <laughs> bodacious big, m &Ms yeah, web right. yeah, Let's say you're a you're a big brand and you get about 30 million views per month. Mm -hmm. That's not going to cut it. You, right. it you, you can sell a premium idea. There would be these low tier websites. You've seen them before. You'll see an ad and it'll say, guess what this celebrity looks like now. You click it mm -hmm. and then it'll yeah. say, here's here's the celebrity throughout 25 years and every photo has 50 ads and yes. you click next and it loads a new page with 50 ads. What they're doing is harvesting views. Right. So then this website that nobody knows the name of, right. nobody visits, tricks you into get, collecting a view. They then sell the rights to those views mm -hmm. to a premium network. The premium, premium network then goes to advertisers and says, our network gets 200 million views per month. Right. And if you advertise with us, you, you are in that network. And in reality, yeah. They only get 30, but they bought the rights to and there, those Meanwhile, ads. there's some it's kid amazing. who's actually getting 10 million views, right? Meanwhile, yep. there's some yeah. kid, and he doesn't get the same advertiser rates because he gets burned. And then those kids drop out. Do you, does anyone ever wonder why the burnout rate is so high in this industry? There are so many good people. I mean, you can go back to when I was on PJTV in 2009. People who I worked with, good, solid people, who, by the way, had skin in the game, who had a lot to lose. And you'll never hear from them again. Because they just go, I'm out. I'm out. They get just. I didn't realize there was a... Right-wing uh, media figure burnout happening, dude. Oh, man. It's, it is it is pretty funny that, like, Steven Crowder is all about workers' rights now when uh, he is reminded that, uh, you know, he is the worker here in this moment. Disenfranchised. They get disenchanted. And the autonomy he's referencing is not even about, like, benefits, or compensation. It's about the right to be racist. I'm losing it. Chanted. And that's the issue. Look, it doesn't it doesn't affect me. I'll be fine either way. But I we've always talked about building a bench, and I've always talked about wanting to be able to pass the torch. It's not possible to do this way. And by the way, the way you know this is true is right now I have said I don't want to do this. Again, I've been thinking about this for a long time, trying to work behind the scenes, trying to work within the system until I realize there's just no interest in doing it that way. Way and then you say, okay, is our move? This is why we lose. Conservatives wonder, how, what, what the hell? What with the midterms? What the hell happened? Like none of this shit makes any fucking sense, dude. You're anti-worker. Like most of your fucking commentary revolves around being anti-worker. It doesn't make sense if you're like, if you're if you're trying to like change the Daily Wire from the outside, like. Just do your own thing. I don't get it. Like, you're like, I don't like the funding mechanism of Daily Wire being over-reliant on, like, YouTube and, and not being banned off YouTube. They should use a better way to fund themselves so they can be as racist as they want to. 
without YouTube, while simultaneously everybody in the fucking process understands that YouTube still has the largest audience. If that was the fucking case, then you would never go on YouTube. You'd just be on Rumble. But nobody wants to be on Rumble because everybody fucking understands that Rumble is fake. It's fake views. They need the real audience. And the real audience is on YouTube. So, of course, they're going to want to fucking maintain their prominence on YouTube. To it. Yeah, I saw this one last night. This shit was fucking bananas. I, I, I made fun of this already. Why do you think? Why do you think people like Lindsey Graham, like Mitch McConnell, nothing personal against them. Why do you think that there are people out there and you go, how do they not get voted out? Why do you think these are our, our decisions for, for speaker? These are our choices. Why do you think you constantly lose? Because the people who really do want to van be the vanguard at the cutting edge, uh, they burn out and they leave because they can't compete against it. And that's the I, issue. I got to tell you, man, I make this point all the time where I just say, for, for all the people who are claiming I'm a grifter or I only want money and that I'm, I don't really believe the things I'm fighting for, I'm like, it, it would be so much easier to sell everything, yeah. shut it all down, yeah. and, and just buy some properties, rent them out, and not have to worry about it. Again, while I was playing Valorant, this was the part where we were watching, and I loved this take because, like, remember, I always say it would be infinitely easier to be a right-wing grifter. I would make so much more fucking money. Notice how he doesn't say I would just grift for the left. I would just quit and become a landlord. It's so much easier to be a landlord, which is true. Being a landlord is pretty easy, okay? But you understand that, right? Like, you, you get why right-wingers don't turn around and say, oh, yeah, um, you know, it would be so much easier if I was a left-wing commentator. I would just become a left-wing grifter commentator uh, and then, you know, cultivate an audience of, of fucking unhinged uh, unhinged weirdos that are going to yell at you for every little thing and, and exist and operate in a space where you're trying to uh, cultivate an audience that's broader uh, of, of unhinged weirdos that are constantly fucking woke scolding and like seeing you in the absolute worst lens possible despite the fact that they adore you or have adored you in the past and have given you money because they think your, your commentary is good and valid and yet they still turn around, and are insanely uncharitable. Nobody wants that. Nobody fucking wants an audience full of mentally ill, uncharitable freaks, okay? You do this for the love of the game. That's why you do it. You do it because you love what you're actually stating. You don't do grifting on the left because, because, okay, here's the reality. It's much harder to cultivate an audience when you're on the left. That's precisely why so many of these motherfuckers that were like, I'm a leftist, are all now doing MAGA, I love Russia, I want to suck Putin's cock type conservatism. Okay? I'm not talking about Crowder anymore, and I'm not talking about fucking Tim Pool. There is no money in shitting on the pre-existing systems. There is a lot of money just making people feel comfortable like oh your existence is actually normal this is just how it, this is great the systems are fine we're in a profoundly uh you know we're, we've we've had technological achievements that make life so much easier you just have a burger and you can watch your favorite tv show and everything is good everything is fine and that the police are actually are defending you I find it interesting that Hassan is basically making the you are so uncharitable to me immediately argument to us that XG made to him at the finale of their last big drama spate. I mean, you're just, I don't know what to tell you. I, I don't know what kind of commentary I can provide to this person who can only see interactions through the lens of Twitch drama. You know what I mean? I, that's, we're having a, we're having an entirely different conversation right now. <sighs> motherfucker brought Twitch drama when I'm talking about how uh, grifting operates in the political commentary space and how so many examples of left, supposedly leftist commentators who ultimately turn right. Why do they do that? There are very few examples of like right-wing people who turn left, I guess. It just doesn't happen. It doesn't happen for two reasons. One, because there's no money there. And two, 
People will never find you. To, they, people will never be charitable to you. Okay? They will just never be charitable to you. If you're right wing at, at a certain point, people will not turn around and be like, oh, yeah, well, I, I genuinely think that you're like a, a, a actual, authentic, charitable, left wing person. Any of this? Take money and shut up. Yeah. Right? Take money and shut up. But. It's not about what's easy. Yeah. It's about what matters. Yeah. And by yeah. the way, we want you guys to make money. We want every conservative yes. in this space to run a profitable business. That's what I run. I own a I wine business. I started Manuka Honey like, back then. Yeah. <laughs> we want it's people fancy. to make as so much money stuff. as humanly possible, but do it honestly. And, and just be honest with people about how you're going to spend that money as well. Well, there's yeah. the, there's there's the no issue, problem. too. Again, we're talking about honesty. Is it just friends or is it just business? You kind of have to pick one. Is it a lash out or is it premeditated? You kind of have to pick one. Thanks for watching this clip from the Tim. The big narrative that we were hearing about your argument. Well, it's not anymore, right? They changed it to the right. phone call. That now was the initial narrative, which was a lie. That's a tactic of the left. Well, so let's, light. let's do the context here. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's a liberal. Everyone's a liberal, dude. I thought Tim Pool was a centrist and not a conservative. Yeah, it's crazy. It's a tactic of the left. They're gaslighting. You're gaslighting me. I can't believe Daily Wire love bombed me and then gaslit me. Everyone's a rad lib. You put out a video, you mentioned, look at these fees. It's, you know, I, I, I never not, mentioned money outside of what right. I believe were immoral penalty fees. I never talked, yeah. you've never heard me say, hey, not enough money was offered. That's not what it's about. So when we, yeah. when we first were watching the show and we talked about it, I said, what's the fee? We don't know. And then the Daily Wire's response, of course, was we offered this guy $50 million. Basketball money. Basketball money. The response then from detractors and most people was, holy crap. And they're imagining... Steven Crowder in a big private bank vault diving into a bunch Scrooge of gold McDuck. coins. McDuck. Yeah, because that is what it is, brother. What the fuck? Like $50 million to run your fucking operation? What are you, insane? Most of that is going to you. Some of that is going to like the peanut gallery, like this fucking guy. But yeah, most of that is going to you. That's crazy. To work fucking four and a half hours a week? I'm losing my mind, dude. What amount of money do right-wingers consider to be like uh, uh, too much, actually, in that regard? I make nowhere near that. And I know for a fucking fact. Daily, it's not I make nowhere near that. And I know for a motherfucking fact, okay, that every single person that watched this video... Every single person that was watching this live stream, including left-wing people, turn around and fucking say, I make that kind of money and I'm a piece of shit and contradictory and a rich fucking asshole grifting and lying. Chump change for mansion boy, exactly. But, he, oh, but wait, if it's Steve Crowder, who they like, who these fucking idiots like, okay, then it's like, oh man, 50 million for four... Four hours a week? That's that's valid. He could make a hundred million for four hours a week. Not about Daily, Daily Wire wasn't even the highest offer. Just to but, be clear. Here, here's what I want to say. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this right in in front of every every single person. I think you're gonna make a hundred million dollars a year. Yeah, I think you're uh, absolutely insane. I think I, I think I'm I think right. I think, I, but I would never demand that. Just to be clear, you see Tim what Poole's bar you're it. setting for yeah. me? Did I tell yep. you my new job? Yep. Yes, for crying out loud. <laughs> I you're trying to, you're trying to give him a heart attack. <laughs> <Jeez>. I, I, <laughs> I I I've seen your numbers. I know, look, we've got 175,000 people watching on a show that normally gets 40, 40 to 45,000. 130,000 live viewers, tripling, quadrupling, quadrupling the live viewership we get because you came to talk about something that is important to you. Yeah. You have people who are not only fans of your content, who are entertained. No, it's because this is the, the drama of the conservative uh, sphere. That's it. That's why. It's like when XQC and I fucking duke it out over dumb shit on Twitch, Okay. And we're reaching the, not those levels, but like, you know, really high fucking numbers. It's just stupid. Um, 175,000 for a live, uh, live stream for uh, Tim Pool on YouTube is a lot of fucking views. Okay? You're jelly as fuck. I am jealous. I'm jealous because I'm jealous of not Tim Pool. I'm jealous of you, Chatter. I'm jealous because you live your life in a state of idiocy. 
you literally like you're, you're like in a bubble. Like I wish I could have that level of happiness. You know what I mean? I'm not jealous of Tim Pool. I'm jealous of you. It's awesome. You are like a fucking golden retriever. You know what I mean? Oh, you get the treat. You're happy. You run around. You sleep. You're chasing fucking cats in your dreams. You're fucking, you know, flinching like you got a vaccine injury. It's awesome. You are a fucking bot. You're an NPC. Your life has to be dope. Like, there's no fucking shot that your life is ultimately not dope. It's awesome. It's great. You came in here and you were like, ah, big number, it must be jealous. Like, no, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm killing it, okay? I'm happy. Bro, I didn't get the jab. There you go. <laughs> Proving me immediately. He didn't even understand the joke I was making. This is what I mean. I didn't say you got the jab, you fucking idiot. Oh, it's awesome. You, this guy, you're, you're, you're having a great time. You're having a grand old time. You're spitting nothing but insults. What do you mean, lol? No, I'm not, dude. Your life is awesome. Your life is great. What do you mean? How, how am I insulting you? Ignorance is bliss. And you are living in a blissful experience, a blissful existence as a fucking bot. You came in here to defend the honor and integrity of Tim Pool, who I assume you think is a centrist, right? You would defend that, I, I suspect. Maybe you won't. Maybe you'll say he's a conservative. You know, while we're talking about, <laughs> while we're talking about uh, fucking Steven Crowder and Tim Pool's audience numbers and whatnot, you're like, <laughs> you're here defending a guy who turned down a $50 million contract and is complaining about it for four hours because there's plenty of fucking dickheads like you out there who will watch him and defend his honor too. I love that. Anyway. It's okay to be jelly. We all like money. Brother, I make, I make enough money. I make enough money. I'm happy. I'm very comfortable with my existence. Okay? Anyone that says I don't is, I don't know what to tell you. Like, that's the number one thing that people criticize me for is how much money I make. But it's not even about how much money I make. It's about how much money I spend. I don't spend money on anything because this is what I like to do. I like streaming. I don't have enough time or, or space to go and do other shit. Okay? <sighs> what I was going to say is YouTube view counts are higher than Twitch view counts in general. It's not exactly an adequate conversion to subscribers, like paying subscribers and members. But even then, this is a very large audience, okay? There's a very large audience that he's getting. But I know Steven Crowder's performance. I know Steven Crowder's metrics. Looking at this one instance of, like, very public drama and thinking that Steven Crowder is, like, bringing in 100K uh, viewers to the Tim Pool broadcast is a silly one. Why do 37K people tune in to watch this guy whine about shit all day? I don't know. Stick around. Maybe you'll understand it yourself. You've been on this platform since 2012, though, so most likely not. Uh, you are already, you know, you're probably never going to get it. You're never going to get a lot of things, including, uh, you know, how, what it feels like to be loved by a woman, for example. Um, but, you know, it's okay. Anyway, let's continue. Tained by it, but also believe in you. Looking at your mug club numbers, I think you launch this thing. You maybe maybe not. Look, it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna snowball rolling downhill. I think you launch this thing and you're making three to five million per month right off the get go. And by the way, you mean the whole production company? Whole production yeah. company, right. you which, personally, which your staff, and, your and employees, and your road. budgets. I'm at a fork in the road. Which is, you You're know, need I a lot can, of money for bandwidth. Steven Crowder doesn't move fucking mountains like that. He just doesn't. If he did, his numbers in comparison to, for example, my numbers individually on my YouTube channel 
okay, not including the Hassan Abbey Clips industrial complex, would be nowhere near, okay? YouTube is not my primary platform. Twitch is my primary platform. I'm one of the largest Twitch streamers on the planet. And even on YouTube, my secondary platform, I'm still destroying Steven Crowder's numbers. Even before we include the Hassan Abbey Clips industrial complex, which brings in around 50 to 60 million additional views a month. Okay? It's just bananas. It is bananas to assume that Steven Crowder could be generating $100 million a year. That's crazy. I mean, that's like glazing gone wrong, you know? They're going to get a lot of people to sign up. I could walk away. And I understand, this isn't lost on me. The only way people will 100% believe what I say and that there's no ulterior motive, which is what I try to do in the negotiations, like take me off the table, this is why this is a sticking point, is if I walk away from this forever. Is if I never monetize again and I just go back off into the sunset just you know do stand up maybe do a once a week show something like that so I can continue selling out the the, the venues and I could do that and Gerald knows that I strongly considered that at one point and I think he was the one if I'm not mistaken who said like yeah but then if you do that then this will just all blow over in two months and it'll be the same problem so I do have, mm-hmm. I get the, I get the question of authenticity again alter, but I would ask you if this is the easy decision if this is the easy route to make uh, route to take could have just taken the money should God, I just wish, like, for once in his fucking life, Tim Pool would ask, like, hard-hitting questions instead of glazing up his fucking reactionary content uh, creator that is sitting across from him and just literally say, okay, if you claim that this was a big deal and a matter of honesty, why did you make a fucking website the day of your announcement to create your own email list? Do you have an NDA? and a non-disparagement uh, agreement with the Blaze. How much of the percentage of your revenue did the Blaze take from the Mug Club? What are your Mug Club numbers? These are like actually unique fucking questions. Just ask some fucking questions, man. If your goal was to, you know... Let the truth be heard about Big Daily Wire, Big Con, all this shit. Why didn't you immediately come out of the gate swinging? Why did you go back and ask for more money? Why did you ask for a $140 million contract? If you didn't care about the money, why did you turn around and ask for $140 million instead of the $50 million that they were offering you? Ask any of these questions, man. One of these fucking questions. I want to know. These are big fucking questions. Like, come on. At this point, it's like, it's not even, I don't know where to begin. It's, it, it's just like the entry, okay? As a person who is doing a fucking job here as an interviewer, these are like literally entry-level questions. It's frustrating, man. It's so fucking frustrating. Have Steven Crowder on? Are you fucking out of your mind? You think Steven Crowder would ever come near me? What are you, insane? You think he doesn't know who the fuck I am? Are you out of your mind? Of course he does. I've said time and time again, Ben Shapiro, Steven Crowder, I would love to fucking debate them. I have no issue debating them. They don't want to, okay? They don't. They don't want to do that. And I'm not even an adequate, competent, fu- I'm not even a competent debater. Think about it this way. He's terrified of Sam Cedar, and I love Sam, okay? Majority Report. I love it. I watch Majority Report regularly. I love Sam. And But Sam has like one-thirtieth the audience I have, one-tenth the audience I have, and he's afraid of Sam and his fucking audience. He's afraid of being exposed even by a, a much smaller audience. Uh, 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 like, you think he would come on here? What are you, crazy? Shut up. Could have gone off. And I don't think it's 100 million. I think you're absolutely insane. No, I'm not. I and, think there's a loose and, I think he slipped you. Nope. Uh, nope. Nope. No, look, we, we, we know about the Daily Wire's subscriber numbers. They have, what, a million paying subscribers? They, it's, it's between 7 and $13 per month to be a member there. We, they, they've talked about their yearly revenues. Wait, it's $13 a month. Okay. I, I For their video content, I believe yeah. it's $13 They run some month. promos and stuff like that, but yeah. yeah. They have different tiers. Right. And it's like, you know, look, I think 
Let's Luke look. wants to talk about the IRS. He's going to see the IRS <laughs> and, and the Epstein Maxwell, Maxwell scandal. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm saying, for one, the easy route for you would have absolutely been sign the deal, take the money and shut up, let everyone else worry about all the problems, and go sit on the beach of the coconut and just do the bare minimum. Yeah. But I think if in. you go the hard way, which running a company, especially with I think the size of memberships you're going to have, is yeah. going to be very difficult and time consuming. But just you know, make Gerald do all the hard no, heavy. Well, if, if, here's the thing. Sorry, if honey, we continue, I won't be home. <laughs> if we continue down this route, then there's got to be other people, right? We have to have yeah. other shows on there. That's I right. could have again just gone off and done it and just kept Mug Club, but Gerald, I said like, look, either I'm going to leave at this point, or we can't just complain and bitch. Yeah. We have to do it better, and that's kind of where we are. And by the way, we still haven't decided what it is that we're going. It's it's a tough decision to make. Yeah. I own 100 percent of Mug Club. Always have. Uh, we did the Mug Club Forever, so we now know how many people are out there. You know, we were really clear. We're like, do not go to Mug Club Forever unless you are currently in Mug Club. We're going to send out somebody, double capture, double opt in, called the list, so we know. We're like, don't go. And is it a newsletter? What? No. <laughs> are you going to get any spam? <laughs> Nothing. Any updates? Only when and where and if Mug Club returns. And this is a little bit of the young Frankenstein. Ovaltine? Nothing. Let me ask you. Let me ask yeah. you. Do you think that when you, you're, you are going to launch something independent, it's going to be Mug Club, but then you're going to add on shows. Do you think you'll be bigger than The Daily Wire? Uh, I don't care. No, no, no. no. Real, real question. Based on your memberships, uh, based on the amount of views you get, do you think you will be bigger than? The, I'm, I'm not saying this as, as it, a, it would. It would. If if I if I decided that I uh, let me answer it this way, I've wanted to be done with this by the time I'm 40. As far as hosting the show on air, the last thing you want to do is overstay your welcome, and then move to a you know um, I wouldn't say like necessarily. Uh, like a Harvey Weinstein or like a Bruckheimer, but more like a Suge Knight, you know? How old are you now? Uh, 35. Okay. So, um, and I want to be able to pass that torch. When's your birthday? July. July, okay. Yeah. So um, I want to be able to pass that torch. Right now, there is no ability to because you now realize there's no ability for people to come up and do. But it would be really hard for you to do what you do now today. You know that, right? Yeah. And, and the, harder and harder. And it'd be day. harder. Yeah. It'd be impossible for someone to do what I do. I don't want to pull the ladder up behind me. So I want to be able to move into a production role, but really what motivates me is being able to pass that mantle and make a difference. I guarantee you, if we were to do it, it'd be within striking distance of the big boys, um, which I'd be fine with. But as long as we do something that we believe in, and I, I promise we will never demand people's YouTube monetization, we will never punish them if they are not. Uh, and it has to be something fair, and it has to be us not shortchanging the He's so fucking investor, cooked. meaning the people, mug club. It's it's the dumbest thing you could possibly do. Oh, God. Trying to build a media network is so stupid, dude. I guess it's, the only time it's not stupid is if you're uh, right wing. I guess maybe you can get, like, fat funding. But even then, it's like it, you're literally dependent on... You're dependent on, you know, investors constantly funneling money into your operation. You just, it's so, TMG built a media network pretty successful. Brother, are you serious? You, you're you comparing content creators who stand on their own legs and are popular content creators like and even then, that's a risky investment, in my opinion. You're not talking about a guy who gets a fraction of their fucking views, who gets a fraction of their audience, who is entirely, entirely fucking uh, uh, funded by right wing. And even TMG, no disrespect to them, love those boys, right? Even TMG is not doing all that well, you know what I mean? Like, it's not. It's a very risky endeavor, and it's not one that helps because there are... So many, they are, there are so many hurdles, like there's so much overhead. Media is, media in this day and age, independent media specifically, in this day and age, has to have virtually no fucking overhead and you can't be static, okay? You can't be static, you have to constantly change it up. I mean, even myself, like I... People do not recognize this, and people just weirdly can't comprehend this, but, like, I am basically a media operation, okay? Like, you might not recognize it. You might not see it that way, but ultimately it's true. That is what it is. 
And look at what I do. I don't have a fucking crew. I don't have a gigantic fucking operation. I don't have a gigantic operation, but that also allows me the freedom to be able to switch off like that. If I don't want to fucking talk about politics one day, I can just be like, I'm not doing politics today. You can't do that when you have a media operation. Do you see what I'm saying? You can't. You can't do any of that ever. I travel, I do IRL streams, shit like that. I switch off the content. You personally, you per, like these guys, these guys, they, they have too many, uh, too many solid foundational, uh, uh, operating costs that like stop them from, uh, that, that stop them from, you know, changing their shit up and you can't do that. You can't do that on the internet. Which is why a lot of these media operations fail. Like OAN, funded by billionaires, still fails. Uh, Steven Crowder, uh, if he tries to become larger uh, and, and grow his operation and like hire other uh, content creators under his umbrella, that's not going to work. Look at TYT. It's just like, you know, it's hard. It's especially hard on the left. But it's still hard even on the right. The NRA did not fail because uh, of, of legal scrutiny. They failed because they did NRA TV. And NRA TV was a bust. Philip DeFranco is a great example as well. Love Philly D. Source fed ultimately was not a, a, a massive success. There are... A million examples of this. Entirely independent, paying us for to fight for what they believe. I'll, Whatever those numbers are, I'd accept them. I'll tell yeah. you my my prediction, which who knows could be worthless. Yeah, Nostradamus you, you, hit me. You you launch uh, uh, subscription service, independent mug club. You get 300,000 hard signups at 10 or more per month. I mean, it, it was 10 bucks a month for, for a lot of people. It's going up because of inflation, because, you know, people need raises and things like that. But let's say. What about the H3 podcast network? H3 does not have a podcast network. Like, Ethan has H3 issue Productions, which is just him and his crew. What do you mean? It's not like they own and operate other content creators, they're not making a network. It's just his crew. It's the same as Steven Crowder. It's a, it's a more expensive endeavor, certainly. It's a more expensive endeavor than like what I do, ultimately. But again, remember, it's a, it's a much smaller uh, crew and can move around on the whims of the individual content creator like Ethan, okay? They can switch it around. Yeah, G4 just just blew up, dude. G4, G4. Like, they're, they're fucking funded by, like, major networks, television, and they still blew the fuck up. Yeah, these networks make as much as Hassan does when he's gaming on their full viewership. It's all billionaires like Hassan said. Exactly. And as far as like, uh, when you're talking about H3 is like under Rooster, H3 works the Roost podcast network for ad sales distribution. Yeah, that's just outsourcing your sales team, which is fine. Instead of having one guy internally manage all that shit, you're just using someone else's client list and someone else's sales team. There you go. That's, that, that's it. You, you think that that is like,
That's an incredibly common thing to like outsource your sales to a network. People do that under podcast networks too. If you want that to be your, if you want that to be your, uh, uh, like funding vehicle, which it's only one component, I don't even care for it. And people come to us all the time. People come to me all the time through my management to, uh, with advertisement deals on the stream. People come to the fucking podcast with advertisement deals on, uh, on the fear and podcast. And I usually don't take them. Specifically because, like, I don't give a shit. Like, I don't need it. The mullet industry contacted us. Why is there so little outside funding for progressive media? Because, because progressive media inherently has to go against... Those who have accumulated wealth at the top. Progressive media has to be anti-capitalist. Why the fuck would corporations or wealthy people turn around and individually fund people who are saying fuck corporations or wealthy people? Ultimately, yes, when you have a large enough audience like myself, okay, Yes, then advertisers will come because they're like, well, there's still a raw audience here and it doesn't matter, okay? But many people don't have this. And I myself, in comparison to content creators at my level of my uh, you know, audience size, get significantly less ads anyway, okay? This is not that hard to comprehend. I don't know what the fuck to tell you. Say you did 10 bucks a month, you're looking at like 3 million in memberships with no ad reads at all. Let's say you do programmatic reads on the podcast version, meaning you, Stephen, never read a single ad. Then you're looking at another, based on your traffic, I'd estimate another two to $5 million per, uh, per year, not per month. So right off the bat, you're looking at $40 million per year. Then here's what happens. Stephen Crowder then offers- Anti-capitalism sells is, is stupid. It's not the truth. A lot of people inherently understand that there's something fundamentally flawed and broken in the way that society is designed. They experience the negative consequences of that. But ultimately, if anti-capitalism sold, there would be not one fucking person like myself, but thousands, okay? This is very difficult to fucking continue and to do. There is no equivalent to Steven Crowder in the YouTube space that is getting 50 fucking million dollar contracts. I am larger than Steven Crowder. I have never been approached with a contract anywhere near that. And if you are delusional enough to think that like MSNBC or CNN are doing anti-capitalist agitprop, I don't know what to tell you you are out of your fucking mind. These guys who very clearly showcase their disdain for even any fraction of, of uh, socialized healthcare. You think those guys are unironically doing anti-capitalist uh, messaging? What are you, crazy? Mark Fisher and the Capitals Realism discussed the anti-capitalist sales narrative very well. Oh, God. I, yeah. Look at the way big liberal outlets approach the conversation around Bernie Sanders, if you want to understand. Bernie Sanders is like, for the most part, very kind, you know, not like a, 
not like an aggressive person, not an offensive person in any meaningful capacity, and they turned him into a demon. Anti-capitalist attitudes and sentiments are ones that most people deep down inside have, okay? A disdain for the rich. That is part of the reason why there is a multi-billion dollar project that is constantly trying to rewire your fucking brain to make you go against that. That's why I always make that joke about how, like, what are what kind of, like, right-wing children shows are the Daily Wire going to create? Like, what are they going to say? Sharing is caring is actually communist propaganda? There are, like, some basics that most people have learned throughout time, through religion or anything like that, or through certain levels of, like, I mean, just basic examples of being a good person that you could loosely associate with being a leftist, okay? Sharing is caring, being one of them. Be kind to individuals. Don't bully those who are, you know, don't punch down. Punch up instead. Okay? Everybody that has a good sense of reading the room understands that. And there is a way to like tap into that while still being inoffensive ultimately. Okay. Hollywood sometimes does this, but the overwhelming majority of Hollywood content is still pro capitalism. If you can't comprehend that, I don't know what to tell you. Pro establishment, pro cop, pro military pro-fucking-exploitation of the third world. That's it. It's always reinforcing basic hierarchies that they're trying to fucking stamp into your brain all the time. Every facet, every facet of media, all the way from local news, all the way to the tippy top, all the way to fucking Marvel films and everything else, are absolutely pro-capitalist. Of course they're pro-capitalist. One thing that always shocked me when you said that, it, that Albert Einstein was a socialist, I had never heard that before, and yet it's true. Yeah, MLK too. There are plenty... There are plenty instances of this. Whereas big players, really good contracts. No BS, no fees, yeah. none of that. Out the gate, it's a legitimately good contract that gives your business a small cut, but gives them the, the lion's share for the work they produce. They're going to say, I'm oh, I'm signing with, back. with Mug Club. The, the, the terms were incredible. I mean, Crowder's going to make money off the deal. The company's going to grow. So with the draft, with the hats. That's right. I'm getting a lot of money. Then what's going to happen is it's going to make it very difficult for the big con, these other big conservative companies to sign these deals. When a young creator says... I appreciate the offer. It's tempting, but Crowder's offering me twice the money with no with no setbacks. Yeah, I would really, really like it, Re genuinely. And, and Gerald knows this. If there's someone else in the space who handles that shit, because because I'm not a business guy. I'm not here's the thing. I'm not, I'm, not, yeah. I'm not a business guy. Yeah. I'm a guy who outpunted his coverage. Right, you can go back and watch with a blue bed sheet who was doing stand up comedy and acting, and then had kind of put had my back up against the wall. Right. I would really like it if there was someone else who already has the money, who already has that ability to do it. If they can't. Okay, I'll carry that torch. It. But, there, well, I don't know. Maybe, maybe there's someone out there. Are there enough good men and enough people left? Because that's that's not the best use of my time. Like, it takes a lot of time to do yeah. a Goodwill hunting. Do you have any idea how hard it is to make Schindler's List funny when you're doing a parody? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, like, it's a lot of work. That's where my time is better spent. And that's where the time, by the way, of all the creators is best spent. Yeah. But instead, they're being forced to make this decision. You know you're a creative type. You want to deal with numbers and back-end and business? It's exhausting. Yeah, I have to do it. I know. No, I don't want to do it. I have to. So I'm building this technology. But right. like yeah. boring. That's what Jeremy Boring why is. why you have to do it? I, I, why? Because we need a new subscription service for creators. It shouldn't fall upon you, though. I have two questions. Well, who else is going to do it? No, no, yeah, no, no, let's no. do it. Exactly. Exactly. It, it, if it, not it, you, it who? If not me, who? If not now, when? That's the let me, and let, Shout out let, to Philip Fisher, the guy building this stuff. Pure genius. I will introduce you to his, him soon. And, Philip, and, I, and I will say, brother. and I will say to everybody listening, it's you. 
It will only ever be you. When you see a burning building, you think, who's going to call this in? No, 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 no. No one's going to call it in. It's going to be you. I I once watched uh, uh, when I was 16 years old, I saw an old lady at a bus stop flip over, land on her back, and I paused and said, I have no idea what to do. What is happening? I look around and I'm like, I got to figure this one out. And I ran full speed into a building and just screamed, call 911, a lady's hurt. There's nobody else. You can't, you can't sit back and just cross your fingers and hope someone else will take care of the problem. Right. Yeah, you got to be yeah. the hero of your own story. I just wanted to ask... That makes uh, me feel terrible. Yes, my favorite. This guy, come in. Come in with some fucking stupid-ass takes, bro. Come on. Okay, I just wanted to ask two quick questions for you guys. One, would you guys, would you guys be open to doing like competitions or contests for new talent? And a lot of people are asking about not gay Jared in the, in the comment section. Can you guys clear up what's happening in that situation? Some people are saying that there's an NDA... Uh, yeah, well, that's the thing I think Candace brought up, right? Again, yeah, r- yeah. there's a difference between roping in third parties versus yeah. single party consent. I think he tweeted out what happened where he left, right? Not gay Jared. He tweeted out that he left. It was his own decision. Um, we did a whole send off with him in a video montage. You know, this works with like conspiracies. And sometimes, look, there's also a middle ground where there's, for example, like what is the email, by the way, if people are talking about shows? Uh, I think it's creators at Latter. Yeah, Carter. creators at Latter. So that's actually not a bad idea. A contest, if we, yeah. you know, the, but the reason I didn't want to do it is because I didn't want to think that's like, hey, this is why we're doing this right now. Um, but we do have a place where people can reach out. The challenge is like, there's completely controlling contracts, right, that own your name, image, likeness, and your platforms that you already built in perpetuity. Okay, that's an extreme example. That's big con. Then you have people who are like, hey, I have no experience. I've never done a show. But I really think I could do it well if you give me money. That's a situation where you'd be incurring all the risk. There is a middle ground. And I think what needs to happen is if we do, I'm not going to be in the business of just creating shows from the ground up. But there are people out there who say, hey, look, I have a channel that's doing relatively well. I keep hitting the ceiling that is YouTube saying we need you to play this kind of ball. Uh, I'm, I'm suffering from the advertising rates, uh, the sponsorship rates dropping across the board. And I can just be, you know, the gasoline on that fire to back them up. Really, why would you sign with a network if, you're, if, they're not, if they don't have your back? That's the only yeah. reason to otherwise be independent, right? What is the upside at that point? That's all we want to be. And whatever subscribers you generate, you keep. That's the only way I would be able to do it. It's really publicity. These big networks get get their faces seen. But if you can do it without that. But right. so I'm people really are still asking, is, is, there, is there an NDA, NDA? That's what people are asking. There are NDAs to everyone just like uh, here. I had to send a waiver when I came. Yeah. If you come yeah. into our studio. I mean, standard you business practice. Yeah, yeah you, can't, you can't come and you can't. Damn. Steven Crowder hitting his employees with a fucking NDA, brother. That's crazy. I'm going to tell people where the studio is, yeah, too. Yeah. I mean, we have know, I mean, you guys have had yeah, that. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. If but, only for location, it would be worth it. <laughs> yeah, also, but, because he walks around with pants half the time. We, oh, we have true. NDAs um, because we work on projects. And in order, it's, it's really, really complicated. One of the simplest reasons is, like, we don't want you leaking information about us. Location yeah. is a good and obvious thing. But also right. projects we're working on cost a lot of money to do preliminary research. If someone then says, goes to a, a competitor or any other media company and says, here's what, you know, Tim Cass is working on and all their stuff, it just completely destroys the entire attempt at making a project. Yeah. Things like Yeah, that. I famously have a non-disparagement agreement with people I work with, which is why, like, Half the time, they're fucking getting me canceled. You know what I mean? Maybe I should do that. Unironically, I'm so fucking stupid. I I should be doing that. That... Of course, and you can have people stealing, you know, creative content, right? I mean, that happens anyway. That this is the most common thing that happens, right? The big boys, they go, oh, that really works. Hey, let's do exactly that. Put $25 million behind it just to promote it. Now it's ours. I was thinking uh, about these. Let let me mention perpetuity clauses really quick before we go to super chats because you brought them up a couple times. Yeah, yeah. Dog nasty and need to be removed immediately from modern entertainment contracts because deep fakes. They're going to be able to take someone's perpetuity face, deep fake it to make it look real, and have it say stuff that the person doesn't agree with. By the time I'm dead and you're going to my mausoleum, I'm going to be hawking black rifle fucking coffee. (laughs) (laughs) Lord prevent it. Let's go to super chats. We're going to read uh, Super Chats from you guys. A lot of questions for... uh... Oh, God. We're not watching the fucking Super Chats. No way, brother. That is brain disease. I'm not doing that. Um, Is this... Did we cover all this? I think... You lost the manager. You want a Super Chat? You want to see the Super Chats? Really? Uh, For crowd... Let's do one. I want to see one Super Chat, Okay. And if you don't want to see it, don't worry. 
uh, unless you're subscribed, the top of the hour is upon us. Okay, it will be behind the three-minute ad break, which usually never is really three minutes long anyway. But at the top of the hour is a three-minute ad break. If you no longer want to see those ads, if you want to hear the super chat, then all you need to do is subscribe for five dollars or for free with the Twitch Prime, or by getting gifted a sub. Trees, bees, knees. Thank you for the three, or thank you for the five. Give the subs. Use the three-minute ad break now. Water and stuff like that, and um, and then at we'll some just, point I'm gonna have to go to the restroom. The you can go. <laughs> there's all, there's multiple bathrooms. I have that's really, that's really, yeah, <laughs> no. I know. Very right. right. Tim crazier, but we're gonna we're gonna record these super even Biden highly Biden. illegal illegal two black. Oh, it's like it, it's just like fucking Biden related. Not interested. Oh, this was fire. 